welcome to the Windows Server Summit and my session about Manage Azure File Sync with Windows Admin Center. I hope I can give you some great insights about this both products and I choose this um, agenda because or this um, session because to show you the worst, the best of both worlds, like how you can manage Windows, how you can use Windows Admin Center to manage your Windows servers, as also how you can uh, use Windows Admin Center to uh, to manage some Azure related services. My name is Gregor Weimling. I'm working for the Adesso SE based in Germany. I'm living near Cologne, and um, I'm one of the organizers of the Azure One Meetup. Uh, it's also near Cologne, and also one of the organizer about the uh, of the Cloud Identity Summit, a yearly conference about identity management and identity security uh, related to Enter ID. So when you are interested, please take a look at this uh, at the website uh, identitysummit.cloud. Um, we will organize the next event in September. I'm really pleased that I uh, am awarded for Microsoft with MVP for security and also for Azure. And yeah, what you can see, may, um, what you can see, my main focus are also Azure services like enterprise scale governance, migration, security, and many many things about the hybrid uh, capabilities that you have with Azure. Enough the words for me. We will dive now into the session. I have a short agenda. I will give you an overview about both services. Then we will dive a little bit deeper into the Azure FileSync world. And I also will dive into the Windows Admin Center world. And I will show you how you can manage Windows Admin Center or how you can manage Azure FileSync with Windows Admin Center in a demo. Okay, firstly, we will take a look at the Windows Admin Center. And I hope you have heard about this because I think um, it is a great tool and services that you must use actually to manage your Windows servers. When you think about the, the server manager itself, it's a little bit complex to import your servers and you can only import servers that are newer. When you, for an example, using a Windows Server 2016, you can import older servers and servers with the same version, but you cannot import like Windows Server 2019. This is not the case when you're using Windows Admin Center, but more important for the Windows Admin Center itself is that you have a modern web-based browser solution that you can use as a central solution for all your servers. And um, it's easy to install. You only have to download an MSE file, install the solution, and it's running fine directly after that you have uh, after you finish the installation. It's web-based, what I have said, directly and fully um, maintained and developed on HTML5. It's worked serverless, a server agentless, which means you doesn't have to install any agent on the other servers that you will be managed from Windows Admin Center. You only have to install the Windows Admin Center and to open the WinRM port. So all the questions to the other servers will be done via PowerShell remote. This is really easy and really fast. And I think this is a good way to start and to directly dive into the session. I will cover here. Um, we see the Windows Admin Center blade itself. Uh, it's a small one, so and it's easy um, to use. You see that I have here for this demo environment um, integrated three servers, two Azure File Sync servers, and one is the Azure um, uh, the Windows Admin Server client it's or the Windows Admin Server itself. When we go into the portal, you see that I have used this here in a, on a local instance, but you can also share this uh, via um, yeah, via browser or, or via web uh, access uh, to your to your other clients, to your other colleagues and so on. And when we take a look at the settings, you see that we have uh, different settings. You can um, access and um, uh, change the language of, of the of the version. You can uh, see that you can many, many, um, that you can use extensions. There are many extensions available that you can use to, yeah, to, um, to manage also third party solution, which is also really great as this solution. These extensions will be 
updated itself from the um, from the Windows Admin Center. Um, you see that you can all things uh, configured like to the internet access. You can register the version with Azure that you also have access to the Azure environment and all this kind of stuff. When we take a look back at the server itself, I will use this remote server that I that is the Azure File Server 1. And here you see that we have an overview about the server itself. So you see that this will directly loading. You see, you see all the important information from the server directly on display. You see the version or the installed version, the, the hardware capabilities that the servers bring, the usage of the CPU and, some, and something like this directly on the page. And then you see in the left bar that you have many options. It will be firstly start with the Azure option, options that you have, this hybrid capabilities that the Windows Admin Center itself brings. How you can, uh, as an example, you can manage Azure Backup, File Sync, what I will show you later, and all the uh, other uh, solutions from this, um, yeah, from this Windows Admin Center. But more also important from the Windows Server management, you can also easily configure your Azure or your Windows Server. And when you take a look, um, for an example, as the event page, please keep in mind how long you need to log into a server or to access the events from another server. When you take a look here, how easy this is, I think this is really great to see how uh, fast the solution itself is. And please keep in mind, the solution itself working directly with PowerShell remoting and use the data and collect the data live because, or shows the data live from the, from the source system. It needs now a little moment. Here we are. And now you see the, uh, the same overview as when you are directly logged in on the server. Uh, you can go to the system information and directly search for some information. You can also see in the security events. And here you will uh, see a great example about the performance that you have when you use Windows Admin Center. And for an example, you're using the event uh, yeah, system to analyze your logs. Also, you will see um, when you see on the files how your Explorer looks like and so on. You can configure the firewall. Uh, on the local firewall on the system, you see the rules and all kind of stuff. So you see some additional um, Defender for Cloud solutions or if you have a Defender uh, solutions. And also when we take a look here as roles and features, you see directly how you easily you can install as the same when you're using the server manager, but a little bit faster, a little bit more comfort comfortable um, to use this Windows Admin Center um, solution to, yeah, to install roles and features and all this kind of stuff. So I think it makes really sense to take a look about the Windows Admin Center, to download it, and really when you doesn't evaluate has in the past, please start now with this, I think also in in the terms of the new release of Windows Admin uh, of the Windows Server 2025 announcement, it makes really sense yeah, to evaluate and to integrate the Windows Admin Center in your daily life. It, I think it makes it really a little bit easier to maintain and manage your current Windows Server environment. Okay. So now we're going back and jump a little bit over to the Azure File Sync solution, which I choose to show you how you can use also Windows Admin Center to, yeah, to manage Windows, uh, to manage some Azure related services. When we take a look at the Azure File Sync solution, I think this is a great benefit. How you can, how you can extend your current on-prem environment with some Azure services to get the best of both worlds. And what Azure File Sync does is it is a synchronized mechanism and synchronized your file servers between company boundaries. And it's available since uh, 2018. For this, you need an agent because the agent is, um, is um, responsible for the synchronization between your files to an Azure file share. I will show you this a little bit here, uh, uh, later. 
And this is fully transparent for the user. So when you think you have different file server solution in different environments, now you can enable and set up an Azure file share in Azure and all the file servers in your different locations can be, um, you can install an agent there and the agent can be connected to the Azure file share. And then you can start a synchronization between all these different branch offices as an example to the Azure file share and all your files will directly stored on the Azure file share solution. Why this is so, um, why this can be uh, helpful? Firstly, for cloud access, for multi-site synchronization. So think about when you have different sites that you will be synchronized with a tool or with a solution. Um, you can use cloud tiering. What cloud tiering does is it brings only the hottest files to the local server, the files that will be used from the employees on this branch on this location, the older files will be only stored in the Azure um, file share solution. This brings you the capability that you can use servers with limited capacity in your branch offices and use and have the full capacity in your Azure file share. When you synchronize all your files from your different file servers into one central solution, you have the great benefit that you can backup all this data on a central place. You just have to think about how can I back up my files on a yeah, on a location, on a branch office or whatever, what for a solution I need, or maybe you some of my uh, customers using have uh, used uh, Robocopy in the past to, uh, to, yeah, to copy the files from a branch office to the headquarter. Now with Cl uh, Azure File Sync, you doesn't have to think about this. You can directly use Azure File Sync synchronize these files to the Azure File Share solution and make the backup there where the files are centrally, centrally stored. And also from, I use this also as an, a solution for rapid file server disaster recovery. So think about you have a file server in a branch office and is failed in a hardware error or whatever. Then you have to set up a new Windows server. You need new hardware or all this kind. Uh, all this new stuff and then you have to set up this and how then you have to think how can I synchronize my data where is my data maybe you have you need to do a local backup with Azure File Sync you can easily set up a new Windows server install the agent connect the agent with the existing Azure File Share and directly the agent will synchronize all the stuffs from your from your Azure File Share to your local file server and now here we are we have a disaster recovery solution also for our uh, environment. How it works? So this is easy. You have here on this right side uh, Azure File Share solution. So you see here the name of the Azure File Share solution and the share name. You will see this a little bit later in the demo also. And then we connect the file sync agent, which is be installed here as an example on a Windows server. And this agent connects via port 443 via HTTPS. Keep this in mind, it's not nothing using or is not using SMB, which can be something like hard to, uh, yeah, to, to use this uh, via internet because it's blocked by the mostly of the providers. It while directly using uh, yeah, port 443 for the synchronization. When you have some trouble with, yeah, with this, then you can also enable private link which brings the possibility that you can use your own VPN connection, which you have from your data center, your local branch office to your uh, Azure environment. And then you can also encapsulate your traffic inside this VPN that the synchronization will not use the public internet as for an example. Um, when you use a file, file share solution in Azure, please keep in mind, it makes really sense to make a difference when you use, when you have now actual file server uh, file shares in use in Azure, please use for Azure File Sync an ex excluded or um, reserv reserved um, instance for Azure File Sync. Doesn't share this with directly connection from the clients, or doesn't allow that clients on the that clients can directly connect to the um, to the Azure File Share 
where the sinkers also be running on it because this can be some challenging because the client itself has no agent and uh, the file share itself see only the synchronization is coming from the agent and only um, makes a limited information to the agent, uh, agent itself and directly on the file share um, in Azure will be something changed. The components are, here are the components and a short overview. You need the storage sync service, which be is which you have to enroll in Azure. Then you create a sync group. A sync group is a synchronization group where you registered all the servers that will be synchronized his files over it. Um, here's a short, my, uh, short hint. You can only associate one server to one sync group. It's not possible at the moment that you have a more than one sync group or that a server is um, pa part of more than one sync group. You need the cloud endpoint, which is the Azure FileShare solution or the Azure FileShare itself. And then you need, need also the server endpoint. This is the server pass on the local file server and the agent itself that you have to install. I have also um, some minutes ago, the, uh, the, the overview giving you the overview about the cloud tiering. And I think this is really also really great about this solution yet you can use yeah, this um, cloud tiering, which only leaves the hottest data on your local file servers, but it will be then synchronized to your, and all of the other uh, files will be only available in the cloud. When a user access a file, which is not um, directly available on the server, then it will be downloaded in the background from the agent and will be loaded and it will be opened for the uh, user. So the user doesn't see any change. See, he sees the files that are all available and doesn't see is the file local available or is the file only in caching mode available. Okay. I think great time to start into the demo and I will show you some different things. So here you see that we have this different uh, file server solution. Here is the file server one and the file server two and the Windows admin server instance that I have installed. When we take a look here at the file server one can go to the file explorer that you see that I have here an, um, an file available um, which contains many, many presentations. When we take a look here at the a second uh, server, you doesn't see any kind of this stuff. Now we will change and back to the um, yeah to the Windows Admin Center itself. I will firstly go to the portal itself. When we search for the Azure File Sync solution, you see we doesn't found this directly. We found this as a solution in the marketplace. When you um, when you also search for this, you can also search for the name storage sync service, then you directly found the um, available Azure file sync solutions. I have en enrolled two for this session. Uh, we use this one where I have set up a synchronization group where you can see here the sync, sync group um, contains the region and also the file share solution that I have um, provisioned for the as a cloud endpoint. You see that, we, that we, as of now, we doesn't have a, um, at any server endpoints, which means currently when we take a look here at the file, uh, file server, there is currently no data stored. So we we'll take a look at here, browsing. So as you see, is, uh, as of now, is empty. Now we're going back. And we're going back also here. And but what you also see, I have registered the first server, the file server one, here with the latest agent information. And so you see also what when the servers was last seen from the agent itself, or when the agent has the last contact to the yeah to the portal. We're going back to the Windows Admin Center solution, and going here to the Azure File Sync solution. 
And here you see also the same that you have seen, but a little bit with more information and also with more uh, links available to some of the documentation side. And here then you see that I have also registered this servers to the Azure File Sync solution or with the name of which you can see here. And now I can go to the Syncer folder, choose the local folder. I choose um, the local uh, VSS uh, folder that I have sh uh, yeah, shown you where I, some data are stored, some presentation. Then I can use an existing sync group, which I have enrolled. I can use an existing Azure Fireshare, which I have set up some minutes before. And then I can set up the sync pro process. Now you, so you see it will be directly integrated and configured on the servers via PowerShell on the agent side. And the synchronization will directly start. And we take a look at the, at the, um, here at the Azure File Share solution. And we take a look at the uh, Azure portal itself. So you see that we now have a new server endpoint available. You see the health status is pending because it will be now set up the synchronization for the files to upload and download the files that are, are available. I use the time to show you also how we can use this to install uh, Azure File Sync on a new server. I have set up here the Azure File Server 2. We go connecting to this one. Directly go over to the Azure File Sync solution. So you see this server has actually no configuration about the Azure File Sync. This is why you now see an, yeah, a, a link to a YouTube video, uh, video where you can show the solution itself. You can go to set up the server. And it needs a little bit, a little moment. Then we can choose our region which will be used. We can choose our subscription for synchronization. It's the right one. I use this one and now we have set up all the stuff that we need and we will directly set up and now in the background PowerShell will go to the server, download the agent, install, installing the agent and will directly configure the agent and connect the server directly with my cloud endpoint, which will be seen a little bit in a little, in a little uh, some seconds. We go back here. So firstly, what you now see is we have the synchronization is done. All our files that we have some minutes ago only on the file server one are now also synchronized directly with on the Azure file share solution. When we go to the storage sync service itself, you see we can here make a refresh and you see this is now set up or is now also impending, but the you have seen the ins uh, installation or the synchronization is done. We will take a look at the registered server. And now directly you see the second server. We will go back and see all set uh, all settings are done. Azure File Sync is directly installed via Windows Admin Center. We can now close it. You see the same overview as some minutes ago on the Azure File Server 1. And now we can also sync, synchronize the folder here. We go to sync the folder. I will also, one moment, I will directly show you also here that currently there are no files currently installed or no folders from this are currently available on this server, which you can see here now. Actually, we doesn't have any new folder here available. I go back to the Azure File Sync solution. We go to the sync, sync folder. Create a new create a new folder. Submit folder is created. Now now we are selecting the folder. Uh, Use an existing synchronization group, use an existing Azure File Share, set up the synchronization. We're going back directly into the into the portal. 
to take a look here. Now we're going here and now you directly see that we have now available two Azure File Server solution. One is also in the state of pending. The other one is in provisioning state and will also start the download of the files in some seconds. When we go back, I hope it will be shown now. Need a second. I try it again. And here we are. Now we have directly downloaded, or the agent have, has directly downloaded the files from the Azure File Share. And you see, now we are done. We have set up the full solution via Windows Admin Center and have set up the synchronization process. We have seen the changes in the portal live and how the Windows Admin Center can help us um, to also set up this solution and to see some of these challenges that you have currently with login to the different servers. Now you can use Windows Admin Center as an example for set up this directly on the server. Okay. I know we have a limited time, so I will going back to the presentation. Think when you have any questions, feel free to ask this in the chat. I will answer you as soon as possible. And yeah, what you have seen is that you have now a central web-based replacement for your server. So keep this in mind and use Windows Admin Center for many, many other solutions, also for third-party solution. I have shown the, uh, this um, also on the portal. Use Windows Admin Center also for hybrid cloud scenario. I think it's really, the deployment is really easy when you use Windows Admin Center because you doesn't have to log in directly on the server, download the agent, search for the agent installation and so on. And yeah, you have a central view also for your Azure File Sync solution. Please keep also in mind what I have uh, mentioned uh, some in uh, on the beginning of the servers. Use Azure File Sync also in terms of backup um, for file servers or also for centralized backup and also maybe as a disaster recovery solution for your file servers. I think this can be is really uh, worth to take a look at it. What I like. As far as installing and stable synchronization, I think the costs are really uh, rare because you only need, uh, as a first server is free, each additional server costs $5. Um, the scale, scalable that you have, the scale, uh, scalability, and it's also supporting DFSRS and scale out file servers. You can also migrate easily your backup and actual the file share limit for one file share is around 100 terabyte. I think this is really also good. Um, and you can also enable um, Azure file share authentication with, with Azure with Active Directory. Okay, uh, here are some links to the slides that you or to the uh, sessions or to some additional information. Thanks for your time. Thank for your attention. I hope I give you a short overview. But I know a lot of stuff in this short amount of time, but I hope I can give you a great overview of it, about this both solution and also why Windows Admin Center can really helpful to manage your on-prem environment as and also, also to manage your Azure hybrid solutions. Thanks for your attention. Wish you a great, great of the day and a rest great conference. See you. And goodbye.